We're following in New Zealand, tourists visited an active volcano, some walking right into the crater. Many of them never made it out. Take a look at these dramatic images. <laughs> Imagine the terror and chaos of having to race onto a boat and escape for your life. The volcano on White Island erupted several times while the tourists were there. Five people are confirmed dead. Eight people are still missing. There doesn't appear to be much hope of uh, finding them alive. Rescuers aren't, able, aren't even able to get near the island right now because it's too dangerous. The prime minister of New Zealand spoke a short time ago. Consensus here is that the focus has to be on uh, those at this time who are critically injured um, and, of course, what is very sadly a recovery operation. Um, of those questions that people undoubtedly will have, uh, the, the context would simply provide is that um, my understanding is that tourism operations have been undertaken there for several decades, uh, uh, up, to, up to 30 years. Um, it has been a live volcano throughout that time. At various times has been at level <coughs> two. Um, uh, but... Um, uh, it is a very unpredictable volcano. There will be questions that will be asked and do need to be answered by the appropriate authorities, and we will be ensuring that that happens. But for now, we're focused on, on those who are caught up in this um, horrific event. Well, meteorologist Tom Sater joins me now with more. So the Prime Minister of New Zealand said this is an active volcano. Mm -hmm. um, so how risky was it to actually be on that island? Because if it uh, had been a tourist destination for that long, right. uh, people have been visiting that place for a while now. Yeah, tourist companies, I, we believe, uh, Hala, take about 10,000 tourists to the volcano every year. But uh, we're going to go through some of the questions they're going to be asking that the prime minister is, is bringing up. 48 kilometers off the coast of the North Island, the Bay of Plenty. Uh, this volcano, 70% of it is underwater, making it the largest volcano in uh, all of New Zealand. But you can see where past eruptions have, you know, kind of collapsed side of this, what we call a cone volcano. You just never know with these things, even though their tremors have been picked up in the last week. Uh, Himawari satellite imagery actually will show the plume here picking up, getting up to about 12,000 uh, feet in elevation. But here are the questions. We found a report that was issued just one week ago. And it comes from GeoNet, of course, of New Zealand, monitoring the situation. And it states, moderate volcanic unrest continues. Substantial gas, steam, mud bursts. And in fact, it goes on to say mud bursts 20, 30 meters in the air. This activity has been present since late September, becoming more frequent. Maybe entering a period where eruptive activity is more likely than normal. So that begs the question, why allow the tourists to get there to begin with? Now, at one time, briefly, we're at a three, a minor eruption. Holla did jump to a four during that activity, but it's back down. And I know everyone's trying to keep up hope for any survivors, but this toxic gas uh, and the smoke plumes is just so at high in intensity, not to mention, of course, uh, the temperatures, the, the water on there is acidic and probably boiling. I mean, we're trying to keep all hope out, but no one knows if it'll erupt again. You just have to hope that all that energy trapped underneath has been released. Wave heights for rescuers, one to five meters so they're going to be battling some winds i think the next 24 hours